hi everyone uh, and welcome to this uh, video that we will compare between the power in a single phase circuit when we have only one sinusoidal one single phase versus the power in a three phase system where we have the three phases phase a b and c with a minus plus 120 phase shift between between them so let's start first with the with a single phase power calculation so we'll start with a voltage V of T that has a, a peak value magnitude cosine omega T so it has certain frequency plus theta of the of the voltage and also we will have I of T is equal to I M cosine omega T plus theta I it has its own angle so there is a difference between the voltage and the current and we understand that this basically because of the impedance there will be a phase shift between the voltage and and the current so what is the power power generally speaking is the multiplication of the voltage with the current so i will call it instantaneous power because it depends on time as we can see here is the voltage is time dependent and the current is time dependent which is equal to v of t times I of T. So simply I will just multiply the voltage with the current. So your power, I will just multiply these two values is equal to Vm. I will take the magnitude of the voltage, magnitude of the current, cosine omega T plus theta V times cosine omega T plus theta I. Now, this becomes down to the math. This is, uh, we know that cosine of A times cosine of B, one of the trigonometry identities, is equal to one half cosine the difference plus one half cosine the summation of the two angles. So we'll do exactly the same thing here. So this will be equal to. We multiply the two cosine function, one half. Now, one half is a common here, so I will take it as a common point. And Vm and Im, the, the, the magnitude, I will take it also as a common quantity. And then we will have this minus this. So this is your A, and this is your B. So it is cosine omega t plus theta V minus omega t minus theta i plus the summation so it's cosine omega t plus theta v plus omega t plus theta i okay so this will cancel with this you will have one half vm i m cosine theta v minus theta i plus cosine 2 omega t, this plus this, plus theta v plus theta i. We can now open the bracket, so we'll have 1 half vm i m cosine theta v minus theta i, plus 1 half vm i m cosine 2 omega t plus theta V plus theta, theta I. So what we notice here, we have two quantities. One of those quantities is not time dependent. It's a constant value. And the other one is basically a time dependent with a frequency, double the frequency, two omega T of the original voltage and current. So if we want to draw this, this is what we will get. We will get a sinusoidal function shifted up with the constant value, the half Vm Im cosine theta V minus theta theta I. Now, we are not interested in the sinusoidal power, so we want to find the average power. P average is equal to 1 over T integration from 0 to T of P of T. So we'll take the integration of the two terms. 
which is basically this term and that term. Now, when we take an integration over the full period of a cosine function or a sine function, you will get a zero. And if you take the integration of a constant number, taking the average of a constant number, it's basically the same number. So without going into any derivation, that the B average is basically one half Vm Im cosine theta V minus theta I. And that is the average power in a single phase circuit. Now, because in power, we don't really use the peak value. So we need to convert that into RMS. We know that the RMS, the root mean square, is equal to Vm divided by root 2. And the IRMS is equal to, again, Im divided by root 2. So from this, we will come up with the final formula that the P average is equal to Vm Im cosine theta V minus theta I. And this is the average power. Okay, so in a single phase circuit, this is the bottom line, we have two quantities. One is time varying and one is the constant value. And we are more interested in the P average or on the constant value. Now let's move from the single phase into the three phase. So now when we have a three phase, we have three phase voltages that are have the same magnitude, same frequency with plus minus 120 phase shift. And same thing for the current. They have the same magnitude, same frequency, plus minus 120 from each other. And there is the difference angle here, which is theta V minus theta I. We will call it theta in, in the following example for short. Instead of saying theta V minus theta I, we'll assume that there is this phase shift. The difference is only theta. So having said that, this is your Vn. This is your VBN and this is your VCN. So these are the three phases. As you can see, they have the same magnitude, same frequency, and then you will have the phase shift, minus 120, minus 240, or plus 120, exactly the same. Minus 240 plus 120 is exactly the same. Now, when it comes to the current, again, they have the same magnitude. So we'll have phase A, phase B, and phase C, and they are, among themselves, there is the minus 120, the minus 240, or the plus minus 120 phase shift. And there is the theta. Theta is basically the, the uh, for each phase, voltage and current, this is the phase difference between the voltage and current that I've mentioned. So this is this theta is basically, not, basically nothing but theta V minus, minus theta. Okay, now we want to find the instantaneous power. What is the in, instantaneous power? As we did in the single phase circuit, we multiplied the voltage with the current. Now we have three quantities each. So we will multiply the phase AN with the current of that phase, phase voltage VBN with that current, and VCN with its own current. So we we'll multiply these three quantities. Okay, and we will substitute. Okay, so P of T is VAN times IA, VBN times IB, and VCN times IC. Now I will come and substitute each one. So we will have this interesting formula. Now VM and IM is a common factor, so we take it outside the formula. And then we will have cosine omega T times cosine omega T minus theta for the first term. This is the first term here. And here's the first term, then cosine omega t minus 120 times omega t minus theta minus 120, which is the second term, and this is our third term. Now we need to start to simplify this. So we'll use that trigonometry identities that we know from, from high from high school. Okay, so the first one we'll use exactly the same one we used in the single phase, which is the multiplication of two cosine function is equal to one half cosine the difference plus cosine the summation. So for example, when you multiply these two together, you will have two terms. One of them is basically omega t minus omega t minus 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 theta. So we will have 
The first term, we will have cosine theta. Now, when you multiply these two terms also, the first term, when you, which is this one, that when you take the difference, this and this will cancel the omega t and the minus 120 will be canceled with the omega t minus 120 and you will have also a cosine theta. And that also will result from the third term. So you'll have cosine theta repeated in each term and then you will have the summation as the second term in every one of these three multiplications. So that's what we will have. You will have three cosine theta. So that is a term this is similar to the cosine theta v minus theta i from the previous one, the one that we got it, the average value, repeated three times. So we'll add the three of them. And then we will have cosine two omega t minus theta. This is res result from what? From adding these two, which is the second term. So this is the second term from the first multiplication, the second term from the second multiplication, the second term from the third multiplication. So when you add this with this, you will get 2 omega t minus 240 minus theta, 2 omega t minus 480 minus theta. Still, we need some more uh, modifications as well or simplification. So basically, we can introduce another variable to make things easier. We will call that variable pi. Okay, so that phi is equal to 2 omega t minus theta. So here, the 2 omega t minus theta, we will call it phi. Then we will have, instead of cosine 2 omega t minus 240 minus theta, we'll take the 2 omega t and the minus theta, we'll have it as phi here, and they will keep the minus 240. Now, phi minus 240 is exactly phi plus 120. And same thing here for the third term, you will have here 2 omega t minus theta, you will get phi, and then minus 480, which is the third term. And minus 480, so we'll have completely 360, and then you are left with minus 120, okay? So minus 480 is exactly equal to minus, one, minus 120. Perfect. So now, we will just substitute and do all these uh, uh, simplification so we will we come up with this now three cosine theta will keep it on the side because this basically is a constant value so put it in the side so we will have cosine phi plus cosine phi plus 120 plus cosine phi minus 120. now there are two identities that also we learned uh, in uh, in high school that cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b and cosine a minus b is equal to again cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b so now let's substitute let's substitute here and cosine 5 we'll keep it as it is cosine 5 plus now cosine 5 plus 120 we will use the first identity we'll have cosine 5 cosine 120 minus sine 5 sine 120 so that's basically nothing but this, this quantity, okay? And then we will have plus the second term, we will use this identity. So it will be cosine phi, cosine 120 plus sine phi, sine 120. Now, what this is equal to what? Now, this will cancel with this. What is cosine 120 is equal to minus one half. Okay, so we'll have cosine phi minus one half cosine phi 
minus one half cosine phi so everything will be zero so all these terms will be equal to zero and hence your instantaneous power is basically a constant value equal to three over two vm i m cosine theta and again we can convert this into rms value so it's three v rms i rms cosine theta and that is one of the important properties of a three-phase system that the instantaneous power is only a constant value doesn't have any time varying as we have seen in the in the single phase circuit